Police officer's wife facing charges. I'm Leah Martin. I'm Lisa Hughes, and tonight for Paula, investigators say the woman lied about a break-in and vandalism at her home, and money problems were the motive. WBZ's Jim Smith is live with the story in Millbury tonight. Jim? Liam and Lisa, tonight police here in Millbury tell me that right from the start, this story just did not seem like it was adding up, and now it has come to this, criminal charges. There was no intruder. There was no burglary. A difficult day for Millbury police, the wife of one of their own officers facing charges. It all began back on October 17th when Maria Daly reported a burglary at the family home. Jewelry and money stolen. She also said the house was tagged with graffiti, possibly referencing the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, police say they've determined the entire account was false. This case initially came to our attention. Um, I, didn't, I didn't think everything, something wasn't quite right. Uh, I think that was pretty obvious. And, um, and as a result of that, the investigation, the officers did their due diligence and followed through the information that we had. And uh, based on that, we came to that conclusion, you know, ultimately what happened, that um, it was all fabricated. Just after she filed the report, Daly took to social media saying, we woke up to not only our house being robbed while we were sleeping, but to see this hatred for no reason. The chief says Daly's husband, Officer Daniel Daly, was not involved in the deception and has been exonerated. It's a story generating plenty of reaction in town. She must have tagged the place herself. I don't know why you do that. You gotta have, if you're gonna stage a robbery, I mean, really? Come on. Or you're a cop's wife. You should know better. And tonight, Maria Daly faces charges of filing a false police report and also misleading a police investigation. She is due in court at a later date. Police Private here in New York is... have arrested 38 thugs described as mobster wannabes. Their alleged crimes included holding up truck drivers and warning them to tell the police that, quote, black guys did it. This is just the latest in a string of cases around the country in which whites have attempted to blame imaginary blacks for a crime. In every case, the hoax can have many real victims, as Dana King reports in tonight's Eye on America. All the things going on in the world now, I mean, it's just crazy. Comedian Paul Mooney thinks whites blaming blacks for murders is getting so common, they ought to have a toll-free number. Hello, blame a nigga. I'm on the freeway. I just killed an entire family. I can't go to jail. I have a life. I'm white. Help me, blame a nigga. Send a nigga over with a bad drunk driving record. I got one right here. I'll send him right over. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sometimes people have to make fun of things that hurt this much. Author Shelby Steele. It hurts black people. It, it continues to mire us in feelings of doubt and shame that we do not deserve. I would like to say to whoever has my children. According to Steele, Susan Smith's invention of a black criminal has a painful logic. There is, again, tragically, this association between blackness and evil uh, that she knew, at least on a subconscious level, and she knew other people would also have that same association and that it would make her story more believable. Henry Louis Gates of Harvard. Maybe it should be overlooked, the fact that she named a black man, and, and we can all move on to bigger and better things. No, it can be overlooked because it's part of a consistent historical pattern. I mean, blacks have been used as scapegoats in this country from the first day that we got here. And it still goes on. 1989, the Boston police tore the black community apart, looking for the alleged murderer of Charles Stewart's wife. Stewart drowned himself when his alibi fell apart. 1992 in Milwaukee, Jesse Anderson told police the alleged black killer of his wife left this hat and knife behind. It didn't wash. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jesse Anderson, guilty of first... <laughs> Susan Smith's decision to play the race card is no surprise in a society that tolerates racism, says civil rights attorney Morris Dees. She was a white woman who has this fear of black men that may have been engendered by, by Bush's Willie Horton ad or the activities of the Ku Klux Klan or politicians. Or television with its nightly parade of young black men in handcuffs. Whites commit the majority of crimes, but the stereotype of the black criminal has some basis in fact. Blacks make up a disproportionate part of prison populations and commit nearly half of all violent crimes. 
but most of those crimes are not committed against white people. According to recent government statistics, while 36% of the robberies were black on white, only 6% of the murders and 9% of all rapes were committed by blacks against whites. My name is Tawana Brawley. All right. I'm not a liar and I'm not crazy. Crime is so racially charged in this country that many blacks and whites were prepared to believe Tawana Brawley, a young black girl who claimed she was gang raped by racist white men. It's the flip side of the same coin. You take available stereotypes and you draw upon them to justify one thing or another. The stereotype of violent young blacks makes it easier for whites to invent black villains. The irony is that young black males are now the most likely victims of crime in America, both real and imagined. I'm Dana King in New York for Eye on America. And that's part of our world tonight.